Hi, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. It is Friday, April 10th, 2015, and uh, I, I have some difficult news to talk about this week for this weekly update. Uh, you know, yesterday there was this horrific video that came out that showed a South Carolina police officer basically executing a man who was running away, from, lumbering away from him, not even running, I would say. And uh, uh, as horrific as that was, I think today we had one that topped that and maybe was more horrific. And the case was simply this. There was a man out in California. He was being served with a warrant for identity theft, uh, a crime, but not really a violent crime. He got in a van and drove off for a bit, got on a horse somehow, a horse with no name, was uh, being chased through the, the, the desert, the chaparral out there in California by a number of deputies. Uh, a police helicopter comes in, knocks him off of the horse, I think, just with surprise and wind and whatnot. And he's, he, the first thing he does is he throws himself on the ground, spread out, because it was a deputy not that far away. This deputy comes up, tases him anyway, even though he's fully prone on the ground. And another deputy walks right up to him at that point and kicks him violently right in the head, face area. And this is when he has his hands behind his back at this point in time, right? So he's on the ground, he's like this, he gets tased, he shakes for a bit, he puts his hands behind his back, gets kicked, then the other guy comes over, starts beating him with a taser, other officers come in, there's up to eight officers involved, but only five can really get a beat down going at any one time. So they, they had to rotate, and this beat down went on for quite a while. It, it's a horrific video. Um, Here's the piece I, I want to talk about. Um, so, first off, he was kicked violently 17 times. He was punched 37 times. He was struck with a baton four times. Now, I, I've walked accidentally into a coffee table, and, and my shin will hurt for a week. So think about a baton, which is wielded with force by somebody who's probably physically conditioned and trained to really make that hurt. He, he took um, 13 blows to the head. Uh, he was pistol whipped with that taser seven times. Now, you can watch the video, Jason. Uh, I'm going to have Jason uh, run a part of the clip here for you um, right as I read this part. So, so here, here's, here's what the sheriff, Sheriff McMahon from San Bernardino, here's what he's saying to, I don't know, make that that thin blue line and, and uh, you know, protect his, his uh, deputies. Uh, so Jason, run this clip of, of the early part of this exchange. So here's what the sheriff says. He says, Sheriff McMahon says, I'm not sure if there was a struggle with the suspect. It appears there was in the early parts of the video. What happens afterwards, I'm not sure of, but we will investigate it thoroughly. Hey, Sheriff McMahon, look, you can do all you want to try and defend the indefensible, but what you can't have is your own facts. It's a video. We get to see it. Did you see that, people? The guy goes prostrate. He puts his hands behind his back. There's no struggle there. The only struggle was the police trying to get in there to figure out how many they could get on, on beating this guy up. Listen, once a suspect submits, if police are using excessive force, to me that's a clear criminal act. I don't know what this sheriff's talking about. I, I don't, we'll investigate it thoroughly. Dude, this is what you should be saying immediately. You should say, I've seen the video. It's completely clear that this guy had submitted and was then treated horribly. He was violently attacked. We are going to have severe consequences. All of the people involved in this are suspended immediately. Many of them will be fired, and I will not be surprised to see if serious charges result. That would be the humane sort of thing that we would expect to follow. Now, but this is a long string of things that we've been seeing happening, where the police commit something, it's caught on tape, and it's really obviously wrongly handled. Whether they're shooting a mentally ill woman within 15 seconds of showing up who has a three inch knife, whether it's shooting a service dog that works with mentally disabled children because the police showed up at the wrong house on a domestic disturbance call, in every one of these cases, the consistent element was this. The police, chief, or sheriff involved said, we followed appropriate procedures, our men did the right thing, or our women did the right thing. Right is right, wrong is wrong. 
we, it's time to face up to this. We live in a violent society that has now glorified and, and enshrined the right of police officers to apparently feel like they can violate the most fundamental rights we have as citizens and get away with it with no consequences. So it's time for consequences. And here's my one-stop shopping. You know, if, if I get to wave my magic policy wand, I can fix all of this. It'll probably be fixed in a month. Here's the fix. Every time the police lose a judgment to a family that's lost a service dog, a loved one, uh, has been horribly abused in some way, when there's a, a, a trial in a, in a, or a civil suit of some kind that comes forward and the police lose that case, the money's involved, one million, 10 million, whatever the judgment is, comes straight out of the police retirement fund and it can't be made up with taxpayer funds. There was a retirement fund and now there's a million dollars missing from it. Trust me, you know, if Officer Jim goes out and beats somebody up and they lose a judgment within a week, you know, that guy will be off the force. It's, it's just incentives. There's no, the incentives are just completely wrongly aligned in this story and until they're aligned, we'll continue to get horrific cases like this. There has to be accountability. You have accountability, I have accountability. I just read a case where a 14-year-old student oversaw his teacher putting her password in, took that password, logged into her computer, uh, or the teacher's computer, and then changed the background screen to something offensive because this was what that 14-year-old thought was a good idea. Listen, 14-year-olds make goofy decisions, right? Within 24 hours, that student has been charged with a felony. Felony. That's instant, immediate consequences it applies if you're a 14-year-old student in America's schools. But if you take a prostrate subject with his hands behind his back and start kicking and beating on this guy, apparently there's some confusion, according to the sheriff, about what might have happened and we'll need an investigation to figure this all out. Listen, folks, this is not going to get any better. It's time to make a stand on this. This is unacceptable. Right is right, wrong is wrong. We're seeing a lot of stuff that's just fundamentally wrong. And the question is, if we can't even stand up for it when it's clearly, obviously wrong, like in a case of police brutality, what are we going to do when we're faced with the idea that our oceans are acidifying and the whole ecosystem in the oceans is collapsing at this point in time? What are we going to do when we finally realize that we're going to have to make important, big decisions around how we're using energy, how we're treating the environment, if we can't even come to some sort of obvious conclusion about separating right from wrong black from white in this story around simple cases of brutality. So I have concerns about that. Now, we have a really interesting two-parter on the website right now by Charles Hughes Smith. It's getting great reviews. People love it. Uh, part two is wonderful. And basically, the summary is around, it's talking about how money works. And if you don't understand the system of money, then you have no chance of really understanding what's happening and why. And by the way, our system of money is basically institutionalized, legalized theft. It really is as simple as that. I could go further and say debt-based money is really a form of slavery for everybody who's involved in it except for the people at the very, very highest level. So what Charles has pointed out is that if you happen to be one of these big banks and you get to uh, borrow a billion dollars at 0.25% interest, it's guaranteed free money that you get because you could take that billion dollars, invest it in, I don't know, treasury bonds or, or maybe some sovereign debt out of some other country and your interest payments are 0.25% but you're earning 3% on the money. That 2.75% spread is pure gravy. They get to do this all day long. Make billions and billions and billions, make billions and billions and billions of dollars without doing anything useful for society. It's a skimming operation. So what frustrates me about this police officer, this sheriff, these other folks, is that they and us, we're actually on the same side of the field. We're playing against this superior team, only we don't know it. These guys have managed to get us to fight with each other. We're fighting the wrong battles. It shouldn't be the Occupy Wall Street people in Zuccotti Park against the NYPD. It should be both of them together against what's happening in this world. And that divisiveness, that us versus them, it's really, it's misdirected. 
So these are the sorts of things we're talking about at the site. Please come by, check them out. I know last week I told you that um, there was an opportunity still to come and participate in the row seminar we're holding in April 24th, 5th, 6th. Uh, that's now full, there's a waiting list, so, so uh, maybe next year. But uh, please come by the site, check us out. If you haven't already, subscribe down here. There's a lot going on, and boy, it's time for us to come together, form a community, figure out what we're going to do about it. So with that, until next week, I'm Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity. Thank you for listening. <laughs>